Baseball at its best. We'll see the Boston Red Sox as they play against the Chicago White Sox. The MLB here on 2K Sports. Will they be able to limit the bat of Carlos Quinton? Well, we're going to find out. We're set to go. U.S. Cellular Field, always a delight to watch a ball game here in the home of the White Sox. Hi, everybody. John Crux, Steve Phillips with yours truly, Gary Thorne. Monday night broadcast of Major League Baseball. And it'll be the right-hander, Eric Bedard, our starting pitcher. And Steve, as he gets into this Boston lineup, what are we going to see? Well, sending a good lefty to the mound in this ball game here, but this is a great lineup, a lineup that can really beat up even some of the best pitchers in the game. So he's going to have to be on top of his game in order to do it and rely upon that movement on his pitches. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup for the Red Sox. Scouting report, John. How about some picks? Well, Adrian Beltre has the potential to do a lot of damage in the middle of the lineup. And it's Jacoby Ellsbury leading off the game. Boston won yesterday, so after splitting the first two games, a good outing to finish that series ahead 2-1 to one against the Yankees in New York. Bedard gets set and delivers. First pitch, fastball, 0-1. And they just issued a shellacking in that last win. Now anytime you post double digits, you win. Right and it's 0-2. Ellsbury cut it down, protect. Uh, coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out. So got to be seeing the ball pretty well. That swung on and grounded up the middle. Yeah. And that'll retire Ellsbury. And a moment to check out the defensive alignment for the White Sox. What do you like out there, Steve? Joe Creedy has great reactions in the hot corner gear. He has great instincts to be able to move, glove the ball, and a strong, accurate arm. And Bernard has him 0-1. That one a call strike. And Dustin Pedroia watches that one go by. The count is even. Well, this guy is a classic finesse pitcher with one of the best curveballs in the league. And he looks at a fastball in there, and it's 1-2 and two now. Steve, also, the batters have to keep in mind he'll mix the fastball in once in a while, and he can really catch him on that pitch. Well, he can, but because the fastball is not overpowering, I think you have to stay back. Let the pitch come to you, and at times, look for the curve. Strike three, Dustin Pedroia. He goes right through that one. He's going to go back to the bench. With two strikes, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. So for a chance, Kevin Euclid, two down. Our teammates got to be feeling pretty good about him right now coming to the plate, knowing he's coming off of his last game when he hit one out of the ballpark, taking advantage of the pitcher being in trouble. Oh. That one gets passed, but no damage done. Here's the one hole. -oh. It was a called strike of the knees, one and one. One one on the way. A really bad pitch right there. It's a ball. Two one pitch. It's now three and one. It'll be tough to get a strike by Euclid here. Lifetime. 233 hitter off the White Sox. He makes contact, line drive. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. And we'll get to see Daisuke Matsuzaka pitch. He gets settled in for Boston. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. But Daisuke Matsuzaka out on hot shot towards the hole. And so Damon retired. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzy Guillen's got going. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, one of the more powerful swings you will ever see. I mean, Jim Tomey's a big, big man, six foot three, over 250 pounds. So if you're a pitcher and you're facing Jim Tomey, you make a mistake, there's a pretty good chance, and don't be surprised or shocked that he hits it out of the park. Nice game at Suzaka. That's strike two, and he's got some pitches to play with. Boy, that good late movement down that cut fastball. Unbelievable action on that pitch. And this rolls all the way to the wall. And Ramirez stretching it. And he's in at second with a double. One up. 
get to take a look at one here that probably should have ended at first base. Well, he had the burners on coming out of the batter's box and rounding first base. Great aggressiveness on his part. He didn't let up, and he gets in safely. No indecision when he got the first base. That's how you get in safely to second. Paul Canerco to the plate, runner in scoring position. Last outing for the White Sox proved to be a win. One game after another, they really do not seem stoppable right now. They're just piling up the W's. Take a look here and see where the Red Sox are positionally around the diamond. Any scouting picks, Steve? Marco Scuro has worked very hard to improve his defense. He came up as a utility player. He's turned himself into an everyday shortstop, and now he can make every play. That's Suzaka gets set and delivers. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect on one. Well, you can tell by that approach. He was looking for that fastball. He got it, but still. Swing, hot shot. Wow, that was close. Right back up the middle. Almost got it. And Ramirez is home. Well, you always feel really good when you can drive in a run for your team. But especially in the first inning, it sets the tone for the rest of the game. And Beckham's in the box. They've done themselves quite a job here. This is a nice push at this point of the ball game to get out in front. Hey, Gary, you can never underestimate the importance of an early lead. It can allow the pitcher to go right at the hitters and pitch with confidence. That's two gone. That keeps those runners at first and second. We're breaking the action here. Let's look at the hit leaders on our State Farm leaderboard. Here's Alex Rios now, RBI chance. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the lead. Two down, runners at first and second. And a swinging strike on the first pitch by Matt Suzaka, 0-1. Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate, day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. Throws to first side is retired. They come out strong, putting a run on the board early. The White Sox lead one to nothing. Lead off hitter, Victor Martinez. Number 41, Victor Martinez. Bedard gets set and delivers. Ball! Not a pretty pitch, no damage. And that swung on and hit. Rios. That's one away. Look at the Eastern Division race now as the season winds down, courtesy of State Farm. Red Sox in first place. Yankees in second place. In the three hole, it's the Orioles. Jays in the four hole. And it's the Rays in the last slot. Right. Much as the off speed pitch ends up 0 1. His batting average, lifetime, 310 against the White Sox. And that's a strike. Cameron, who does strike out, will have to be careful here. Coming into play today, all his teammates wanted to talk about was the fact he drove in four big runs in the last game. And Mike Cameron goes down swinging. That's strike three. The clock at 79 on K Cam and pretty decent movement on that breaking ball. Well, sometimes you get fooled so badly, there's just nothing else you can do but hope and pray that you put the ball in play, hopefully foul, to get another pitch to hit. And Adrian Beltre up. Bedard gets him to swing and a miss for a strike. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right now. Here's the pitch. Ball! And Adrian Beltre looks at that one for a ball. It'll even it up. Good spot there. Just down a little bit out of the zone. Tried to get him to chase. He wouldn't go for it. A swing and a batted ball. Damon. And that's going to do it in this half inning. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. Still unable to score. Boston still a zero.
What a third of the lineup coming up. It's going to be Brzezinski. I don't know if you have a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one. Swing the bat well. Brzezinski. Hit sharply towards the hole. Yeah, and that pitcher makes a nice play at first base. That was a nice play. Saw the opportunity at first. Didn't waste any time getting over. That's the key. Beat the runner to the back. Good hustle off the mound. One out. Base is empty. Matt Suzaka gets set and delivers. Taps this one foul to the right. Swing and lined up the middle. And it gets down. The streak is on. So Jim tell me coming up here are the players with a little something extra extra base hit leaders this month courtesy of State Farm right there in the top five and home runs one out run around at first there's a swing a drive down the low field line it's towards the corner and bye bye that's a two-run hole. A little distance now, increasing their lead one to three. Two runs on the board on the long ball. Contributes to the chance of winning. You bet. Here's our Pepsi WPA graph. Pitch down and away, Steve. He found a way to go out and get it. Uh, that's a pitcher's pitch. I mean, there's not much you can do there. That's an exceptional job of hitting. Not many guys can hit a home run on that one. White Sox lead expanded here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. He's out at first base. Nice play on the cover. Uh, that's a well-executed play right there, Gary. He hustled over, got the first base. Touch the bag. Thought he might have had a strike out there, but he's involved in the out anyway. And uh, in the bat, headed for the middle. Oh, my. How did he get out of the way of that? Those are scary. Well, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Third in batting average. Third most in hits. And you can tell he has that willingness to work the count and get on base. Ranked in the top five in on base percentage. That's a major Great asset ball. for his club's offense. A table setter, a guy who can get on and who can score a ton of runs. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. He's the league leader in ribbies. Nice K Matt Suzaka. That's strike two, and he's got some pitches to play with. This ball is hammered deep right. And for Hamida, out number three. And they add a couple more runs here and extend their lead even further. White Sox up three. It'll be the bottom third of the order coming to the plate. Here's a glimpse of Terry Francona. He's dealing with the prospect of an offense unable to get any runs here, compounded by the performance of his pitchers, especially over the last three outs. That one gets passed, but no damage done. Third strike on the outside corner, and it's one and one. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four seamer down and away. Smash towards the middle. Back up. One away. Our State Farm leaderboard, the group of arms who have been lights out over the past ten games. Number one, the White Sox. The Royals in second. The Orioles third. Indians fourth. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. Let me take a look at these low ERAs, and I think it really points to the fact they have depth in their pitching staff. The starting pitching and the bullpen have been getting the job done, really limiting the opposition. Takes so much pressure off the offense. That one's too low. Bedard missing. But if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. That one goes foul. One-two pitch coming. Hit hard to second. Beckham. 
He's and Veritek retired. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else yeah. right now. You limit the run scored, you give yourself a chance to win. Now Przinsky positions himself. And Eric Bedard delivers strike two. He's in control in this A.B. Well, the hitter's got to protect the outer part of the plate right here, down 0-2. There's a swing, line drive, center field. Base hit, gets it down. That's our first hit of the game the for these guys. For the and Red that'll Sox. bring up Jacoby Ellsberg. Well, the first two. thing you have to do if you want to score Ellsberg. runs is get a base hit. They finally got that hit. Now let's see if they can bring him around. And he steals off, and he gets away with it. He's one of the league's best. And it gets through. Now the tying run at the plate. No, they and do the not get him. He's safe at third. Up next, Number Dustin 15. Pedroia. Well, I tell you, with this kind of speed, he really can impact the game. And it's only the pitchers and catchers really need to keep an eye on on the bases. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Just one hit, 14 career at bats against Bedard. And in there, Boston for a run. Boston, what offensive production right now. Number 20, Kevin Buchanan. Well, you see the pitch down in the zone a little bit, but he got a good piece of wood on it and drives it. What you like about that at bat is the discipline to keep your head in. Well, I'll tell you what, he changed locations, went down to the zone. It's a solid piece of hitting. And now time is called. This is going to be the first time we've had a visit to the mound. Well, it's going to be a conference time, Gary. They might not take him out here, but it's pretty likely they're going to make a change soon. And maybe stalling for time. Nicholas lays off for a strike. Now that he's established the strike zone down and in, he can elevate a pitch or go with something soft away from the hitter. Up the middle. And yet another hit there, seeing the ball well. And Ellsbury comes in to score. And safe, he's in there. Openings for this lineup offensively. Don't give it to him now, because they are hot. And Martinez ready to start the at bat first pitch. And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. Well, the pitcher going for that hole and most hitters swing up and in. He found that strike zone with a four seam fastball and he couldn't get to it. The pitch. Swing and a foul straight back. Oh, that's the last thing they wanted here. That runner could come home. Can't get him. The run scores on the error. Well, they pick up a run uh, with a little bit of help from the defense as they kick that one around. Not able to make the play. Run score. He was uh, able to ring up that K, and that's going to get him out of the inning. They pick up four hits in the inning and three runs across the plate. We've got a stalemate going here in Chicago. And if you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crump. First pitch to Quentin. A smash to first. And he'll step on first for out number one. You have to have good hands and good feet at first base. He has both as he scoops it up and takes care of it himself. One out, nobody on. Swung on, hit. Gets down. The go-ahead runs on base. So that brings Alex Rios to the plate. Center fielder. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in runs scored, top five. And he starts Rios out. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. Well, a little ways to go here in the season. The American League wild card. How's it look? Well, let's take a look. Brought to you by State Farm. Mariners in first place. In second place, the Yankees. In the three hole, it's the Orioles. Fourth place, the Royals, Blue Jays in the fifth spot, and down at the bottom, the Texas Rangers. What a great race we have in the American League wildcard. There's a bullet towards third, and Beltre gloves that one. 
And that keeps the runners at first and second. Well, he keeps the runners right where they are, so now he's just out of the way from working his way out of danger and keeping this game tied. First pitch to Creedy. Cut fastball, swung on and missed, 0-1. Now coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out, so got to be seeing the ball pretty well. Joe Creedy comes up empty, a swing, no contact. So, no runs, two hits, and they strand two. Red Sox three, the White Sox three. Taking it down to the ball game, there's Ozzie Gein. And the prospect here, I'm sure he's considering how to maximize each opportunity in a very close game. That one's too low, Bedard missing. Oh, it's a great fastball right there down in the strike zone. Now there's so many ways to go. Let's see how he comes back to attack this hitter. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Really bad pitch right there. It's a ball. Here's the 2-1. Swung on, liner to right. And that is in there, the go-ahead run on board. That's going to bring up Adrian Beltre. We're seeing some late September baseball now, looking at the State Farm standing board. This is how the Central Division stands. It's the White Sox in first, second place the Royals. In third, the Indians. In the fourth spot, it's the Twins. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. The Chicago White Sox on fire right now, back from the dead. They couldn't do anything right before, and now they're doing everything right. First pitch and he misses the fastball strike one. You look at the lifetime numbers 279 oh. off the White Sox. There's the throw and he's in there at second base. Ground ball towards the second baseman. So Beltre is set down. And now a chance to see where the Red Sox sit in the American League range. Second batting average with runners in scoring position. Second walks. And they're the number two team in ERA. The pitching staff getting the job done. Quality stuff. Making big pitches in tough situations. No balls. One strike. Here's Badon. That's a strike and it's 0-2. Time for Amita to protect. The hitter needs a two-strike approach. Shorten up the swing. Think about going the other way. And it holds at 0-2. It's your turn, White Sox. Lines this one to the left side out of play. Well, you have an 0-2 count, and that pitcher comes up in the strike zone. You know he's looking for that strikeout. Line softly to center field. And it's through. Hermita brings him home. Well, the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. There it is. Steve looked like that was a strike. Ball was up high, but I think in the zone. Well, up and away, but on an 0-2 count, you're thinking, I need to make contact. Exceptional job of high-hand coordination. And Jason Veritek to bat. Oh! Offense, when you get it, boy, it doesn't matter what part of the game it is. Now they've got themselves something to build on. Well, you have to credit this lineup here. He's some quality at bats right now. And taking advantage of the opportunities, and now they have a lead. And it may be early going. They've got a chance to maybe put this ball game away and put a little defeatism on the other side. Well, what I really like is their approach at the plate. They're waiting for their pitch, and when they get it, they're driving it. Take Swung on. That is hit. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. Well, they score once on two hits, one man left. Red Sox jump out ahead in this one. And Jim Tomey, he homered earlier in the ballgame. A couple of productive at bats so far in this one, despite the fact they're losing. A base hit, uh, driving in a run, Gary, then the home run as well. So he has swung the bat and done some damage. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Strike one. And a swinging strike on the first pitch by Matt Suzaka. 0-1. Well, I tell you what, for two-seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Matter swung late. And that's a strike. Tomei's going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. Looking to carry the momentum from last game when he had three RBIs into this one today. This one to Ellsbury. 
and meanders over to put it away. And it's Johnny Damon now. He's got one of the best averages in the American League. Base is empty with one away. Matt Suzaka gets set and delivers. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. Hit sharply down the line. And he's got it. What a play. Number 10. A dive and an out. Alexi. I've never really liked playing third base. That ball can get on you so quickly, especially if teams are pulling the ball. But you got to have quick reactions, and he did there. And a shot here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And he'll step on first to retire the side. It's the kind of inning the defense likes. Three up, three down. Red Sox four, the White Sox three. It'll be the leadoff man trying to get things going here. And Jacoby Ellsbury to bat. They said his last time. For two, Jacoby Ellsbury. Dave Bush going to the mound. They've decided it was time to make a change here. Well, they had to go to the bullpen much earlier than they anticipated, but the starter wasn't getting it done, and you can't let this game get away from him. And he starts Ellsbury out. Hit hard on the ground to short. One away. Shortstop makes a nice play right here, Gary. Good feet at that position. Gets the easy out of course. And he watches the low pitch from Bush. Now Przinsky positions himself. Pedroia will foul that one away. The 1 1. Swung on and a grounder to first. And he steps on first. That's the second out. So for a chance, Kevin Euclid's two down. Single home a run in his last at bat. The pitch from Bush. And that's too low. 1 0. Here's the 1 0. Line towards second. And he's there to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no one left on. And it'll be the White Sox. Things will start getting a little more difficult. Third man in the lineup coming up. And Paul Kodarko to lead it off. I got to be feeling pretty good about himself right now. Driving in runs, hit a big shot last game out there. And got to have some confidence coming into today. And he starts Canerco out. Now swinging a shot towards second. That's one down. And a brief look at who's leading the league in home runs courtesy of State Farm. Well, this is a list of hitters that strikes fear in the opposition pitching. They have to because they know with one swing of the bat, they can change the score of the game. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now, leading the MLB in batting average. Nobody on base, one away. First pitch to Quinton. There's a swing and a ball hit high, deep to right field. Gone, goodbye home run. And they're happy to tie that one up, back to an even ball game with that solo shot. Gary, really important for the Sox right there to tie this up. Now if Chicago can get a big hit, they've got a chance to take the lead. And a swinging strike on the first pitch by Matt Suzaka. On one. And Steve, at this juncture, this is exactly what they wanted. We're grounder up by Beltre. And Beckham set down. Boy, it's such an asset to an offense when you get the ball out of the ballpark, and these guys are clearly so important to their team. That ability to drive in a run from first base or to drive yourself in from the plate. And Alex Rios up. And one of the top ten averages right now. And a swinging strike on the first pitch by Matt Suzaka. 0-1. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. 
looking to build offensively off his last game where he had a couple of RBIs and trying to carry that into this one as well. Ended this inning with a nice piece of pitching work as he gets the K. So they pick up a run on the home run and pull even. We've got a stalemate going here in Chicago. And if you're just joining in, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crock bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And it's Victor Martinez at the plate. And he gets a walk a lot. The American League has him in the top five. The pitch from Bush. Watches a fastball that's in there. 0 and 1. Base runners are what you want. It's on base percentage. Get on and see what happens. And this guy's so patient, he finds different ways to get on, and he'll take a walk. And that'll retire Martinez. We've got Mike Cameron in the box. Base is empty. One out. Cameron gets set. Here's the first pitch. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And they get to him in time to tag him up. Here's Adrian Beltre with two down. Ground out victim last time through. Ground ball to short. And Ramirez feels the ball. Oh. Throws to first in time. That's three down. Well, how about that? Only it's going to be Brzezinski. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Here's the first pitch. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0 and 1. No balls, one strike. Here's Matsuzaka. Beltre dives, gets it. And the throws in time at first. Mercy, what a play. You knew we were going to say hot corner on this place. There's no question about it. You've got to be scared sometimes down there with the way the ball gets on you. Great reactions and then the accurate throw from his knees. A swing line to left center. Gets down. The go-ahead runs on base. So Jim tell me coming up here's a look at the pitching staffs that are keeping that batting average against down over the last 10 days courtesy of State Fire the Orioles number one second the Rays Royals held the third spot fourth the Twins and it's the Red Sox number five you look at those low opponents batting averages those really are the pitching staffs with the best stuff they're the ones that get the most outs and the most swings and misses and the most pop outs and the hit swung on hit. Fantastic chance here. Well, he's still playing back in this situation. A well hit ball, just getting by him for a base hit. So Johnny Damon thinks RBI, top five AL in runs scored. Runners on first and second with one out. Matt Suzaka gets set and delivers. Over near third, and it falls in. Hitting streak continues. And that will score the run tie broken. They've got the lead. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Let's see what the RBI means for their win chances. Our Pepsi WPA graph. Daisuke Matsuzaka is pitching a lot of big games in his career. Well, he's facing a big moment in this one. This is a mighty tough spot here, Steve. Team down by just a. This one swung on and driven hard. And it's going to be Cameron. And he is going to try to score. The throw. And that first run scores. Quality solid at bat right there. This is what you want to do. The runner on the front way to get him in, even if he hit into an out. And it's going to be Ramon Ramirez on the mound. He'll be the reliever for the Red Sox. Well, this wasn't the type of start the pitcher wanted, or the manager wanted, or his team wanted. Now they've got to see if the bullpen can do a little bit better. And Paul putt shot towards the hole. And he's out at first. What an out. They pick up two, three hits, strand a man. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. And 
camera, we get a look at Terry Francona. And at this point in this game, thinking about offense, I'm sure he also needs some quality pitching. Got to give his bats a chance to get back. And it's Jeremy Hermida now to lead it off. Fresh count on Hermida. Here it comes. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. One away now. And Jason Veritek to bat. Struck out swinging his last time up. One out, nobody on. The pitch from Bush. The fastball is in there. It's 0 and 1. One out right here, up by two in the inning. You want to limit base runners and make plays. Try to, to eliminate the lead runner, but get outs if you can. That's a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Time for Veritek to protect here. Swing and a miss. Veritek out of it. They made it look easy right there. Slicing and dicing, just attacking the strike zone. Three pitches, all for strikes, sitting out. Two outs, bases empty. Here's the first pitch. And Bush's pitch looked at for a strike 0 and 1. Well, offensively here in the seventh inning with two outs, you cannot just lay down here and say, well, we'll start it off next inning. You got an out left here in the seventh. See what you can do to generate one. Pick up one if you can, and then hope maybe that you can start to finish it off later. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Beckham. And they'll record the out at first base. Good timing on that play. Well, he might not have been able to get him out of the plate, but a short run over to the first, and he still retires his minutes. Three up, three down for Dave Bush. Loosen him up. Seventh inning stretch time on the south side. Big bats ready to make an appearance. And if you've just joined us, our broadcast of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with John Cruck and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. First pitch to Quinton. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0 and 1. 1 for 9, career batter off Ramon Ramirez. Swing and a drive, deep left center. And it's going to be Cameron. And he gets over to take care of it. Well, I followed the scouting reports. They moved the outfielders back before the play, and they were in exactly the right position to be able to make the catch. Good coaching. There's a swing and a drive, deep right field. That's going to one hop off the wall. He's going to try and test him there. Take the risk, and sometimes it pays off, and it does there. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a risk. There's no question about it. He got in safely, but I have to consider whether it's a risk worth taking. It's Alex Rios. Boy, what a chance he's got here for the White Sox. Grounder up by Beltre. So Rios is set down. Brought to you by State Farm. A look at the pitching staffs responsible for sending the most hitters back with a K this month. The Yankees, number one. The Indians, second. Third, the Mariners. Fourth, the Twins. And it's the Red Sox, number five. You see the, the prodigious strikeout numbers for these teams. A shot up the middle. And that'll put Krasinski on first. The run scores. Well, anytime you have two hits in a game, it will build confidence, and he's carrying it over into this game. Now it's Joe Creedy. Well, they've definitely got a rhythm going right now, each player feeding off the other. Offense coming to life late here. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. This one to Ellsbury. And that's out number three. So they score once on two hits, one man left. White Sox up three. Isaac Ian taking a look at you right there. Satisfied manager, I think, right now. He's got the ball club in a pretty good spot. The pitch from Bush. Fastball in there for a called strike. Obviously getting late right now, Gary, and I think that from the pitching perspective, you'll trade an out for a run at this stage of the game, understanding that for every out you get, you're closer to winning. And we'll get
get to see Tony Pena pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. And Steve, as he gets into this Boston lineup, what are we going to see? When you bring in a guy out of the bullpen, you like to have some power stuff, and that's what Tony Pena brings. Power with that fastball. Now, he doesn't have a great secondary pitch. A slider is okay. He relies Whoa. mostly on that fastball, so hitters are going to look to be aggressive early in the count. Now the 2 1 pitch. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And that'll retire Ellsbury. And it's Dustin Pedroia in the box now. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Fresh count on Pedroia. Here it comes. Watches that fastball. That goes by him for a strike. Now trailing right now, down three runs. You got one out here in the eighth. You got five outs left, is the way you have to look at it. They need oh. base runners. Get people on and hope somebody runs into one. A three run deficit, not too much to overcome. Pedroia fouls off another. Well, when a pitcher throws a pitch out there 0 2, you're expecting him to get a ground out or a strikeout. But this guy just reaches out, puts it in play, defensive oh. swing to keep this thing going. Here's the delivery. Oh. And he fouls off another one. Well, even though he took a defensive swing right there, that might have been a pitch he could drive. But you know oh. what? With two strikes, you just have to battle and battle and battle and hope he gets one down in the zone. You can just drop the head of the bat on. Oh. And that's another foul ball. And Dustin Pedroia's down. No contact. That's his big out pitch. That splitter with two strikes. It's the go-to pitch. He's sending him home. So for a chance, Kevin Euclid's two down. Try it again here. Just one for three thus far. Here's the first delivery to Euclid. Fastball just misses. 1-0. Oh. Now listen, this is still doable from the offensive perspective, Gary. They're only down three. It would be nice. Swing, hot shot. Oh, mercy. Oh, that did not miss him by much, but he got out of the way. Well, late in the game and you're behind by a few runs, you're going to need base runners and a two-out base hit right here. This team needs to string a few more together if they want to try to tie this one up. A runner on first with two outs. Two outs and a man on first. And Martinez ready to start the at bat. First pitch. Fastball is downstairs. One ball, no strikes. Well, that's the pitch you want for the ground ball out there. Two seam fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. Just couldn't quite catch the plate. Good eye by the hitter. Down the left field line. That is in. It's going to bring the tying run to the plate. Now Victor Martinez uh, showing up in the league this year. Let's take a look at his production and what he's doing. Third in walks, tenth in on base percentage, and he's also ranked in the top 15 in RBI. So clutch situations, the pressure never seems to get to him. Headed for the middle, and that's going to be a base hit. Tying run is on. Euclidus around third, headed to the plate, and Euclidus is home. What more do you need to see? Now you have to question his confidence. Giving up three straight hits. Not much going right out there at this point. Gary, Adrian Beltre coming to the plate right now in his big showdown situation in this game, trying to deliver for his team. They're looking at a lot of determination right now. They are closing in. These are crucial at-bats. Well, they're narrowing the lead late here in the game, Gary, and they're showing some fight left in those bats. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. Throws on the first side is retired. So they scratch across a run. Three hits and a couple left on. Boston, now they're trying to put some pressure on and cut into that lead. And Jim oh. 
Tommy to lead it up. Two for three thus far. He's swinging the bat very well today, doing a little bit of everything, driving in runs, hitting the ball in the ballpark, having a good ball game. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Swing liner back up the middle. And in there for a base hit. He's three for four today. Well, just what his team needed. He continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ballgame, and he's on with no outs. Here is Johnny Damon. He is 0 for 13 lifetime of Papelbon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And it's starting to head out towards the wall. He's thinking extra bases. The throw. Tommy's going to try to score. Tagged at home and he is out of there. The teams who have been reaching home the most over the past 10, courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Mariners. The Red Sox third. Fourth, the Orioles. Number five, the Royals rounded out. Well, there are stretches during the season when every team struggles to score runs. But these two teams right now in these last 10 games have found a way to be able to throw runners across the board. They are doing it in every single way conceivably possible. They're doing it with power. They're doing it with speed. They're complete offenses, and the pitchers better be good or else their ERA is going to skyrocket. The pitch from Papelbon. Here's a swing and a broken bat line drive. And it's in time from his knees to get the out. This is an acrobatic play worth another look to get that out. Well, look how quickly he gets to his knees. That's body control. Terrific effort. And he starts Canerco out. Hit sharply towards the hole. And Damon comes in. A perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside. Go the other way. Here's Carlos Quinton. Just one player picking up after another, Steve. This is, this is a good offensive show going on, and they're climbing the ladder with it. Offense coming to life late here, tacking on additional insurance runs, taking the pressure off the pitcher. That first pitch was fouled off. It's on one. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. And it's going to be Hermita. And there's the third out. They pick up one on three hits, strand a man. White Sox up three. And the dugout shot of Terry Franco. He's reflecting right now, not uh, likely a lot of positive reflections, however, in this game. And that's in there. Jenks ahead on one. I think right now they're looking to get a couple guys on and see if they can't get somebody to hit one out of the ballpark right here. So base runner's the key. Do not run into outs. Be conservative on the bases. You're down three. He delivers. Line drive. So Hermita is retired. Well, offensively right now, you're running out of time down your final two outs. And it's all about getting people on base and then let somebody run into an extra base hit. One run at a time, one base runner at a time, but start to believe you can do it. Oh, one count as that started off with a strike. That's a good, hard oh. fastball right there. Let's see if he comes back with another one now. Swings for a strike on the fastball. It'll be a one-two count. Still one and two. The one-two on its way. Rung him up. Strike three. Count that one as a cake. Let's take another look at that pitch. It's a two-seam fastball on KK. Well, he just looked overpowered on those two fastballs. John thought the timing that time just didn't seem to be there in the end. Well, and a, and a strikeout like that will give the pitcher a lot of confidence. And we're going to see Scudero here. One for four in his career against Jenks. This one's grounded foul wide yeah. of first. Swung on and missed, and this game's history. A good all-around effort, Gary, by the White Sox today allows them to get the win. They've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. 
And we take a look at our player who was clearly instrumental in this contest, our Pepsi clutch performer. And it was a great pleasure to watch the performance of Jim Tillman. Well, you know, Gary, when someone gets on a hot streak like this, all you can do is sit back, tip your hat, and watch the show. He was spraying the ball all over the field, and one just happened to leave the ballpark. That'll make you the Pepsi clutch performer of the game just about every time. And Steve, that ought to send these folks home now. Well, no question about it. They get the win in a close game. A lot of excitement and enthusiasm and ready for the next one. So glad you could join us. For Steve Phillips and John Crock, I'm Gary Thorne. We'll see you real soon.